Benjamin Bender, former detective at St. Louis Metropolitan Police, stated, In a fight, if I were to hold you down and begin choking you, it would take about a full minute for you to lose consciousness, assuming your heart is pounding and breathing rapidly. To kill the person, you would have to continue to apply pressure sufficient to strangulate for about four to five minutes in order to ensure death, probably longer in some cases. That is why it is one of the more horrible and harshly punished murders. It takes a long time to do, a minimum of four to six minutes to sit there quietly with the person unconscious, squeezing with time to stop and reconsider. It's not a trigger, pull instant decision. It's a process. You can't argue self-defense or heat of the moment with strangulation. You had a long time with the person utterly defenseless to stop and come to your senses, as it were. Welcome to Your Blackout, a whole new series that we're going to be working on from time to time about Gabby Petito's murder. And possibly, I would say more than likely, about Brian Laundrie as well. So if you're into that case and you want to start a new series, join me on this Missing in Minutes podcast. Your screen is intentionally black. That is so that you can be free to do some thinking and do your own research, which I highly recommend. 30 days after Gabby Petito is reported missing on September 11th, we have a report from the Teton County Coroner, Dr. Brent Blue, who stated that the cause of death was ruled to be strangulation. In particular, it was manual strangulation throttling, according to the coroner's verdict. Now, can you imagine how much hatred and anger and rage someone would have to have to take Gabby and not only choke her till she's out cold, but then continue to apply pressure for the next five to six minutes to ensure death? It's mind-boggling. Serena Prince, author of what you need to know about narcissists was asked a very important question. One I feel is very relevant with the Gabby Petito case because Gabby herself showed motions of his hands up to her face on the body cam footage, as well as it was brought to her attention that she had a scratch on her face and she said it burned. Let's ask the question. Once a narcissist strangles their victim, in other words, attempts to kill them, would you agree this has most likely happened before and will happen again? Or do you think it was a one-time deal? Serena Prince answered that. She says, speaking from experience, I can almost guarantee that when a narcissist strangles a victim, it will happen again. And it most likely happened before. She goes on to say, one year ago today, I was still living with my malignant narcissist ex. Our 18-year marriage was coming to an end, though at the time I didn't think I would survive it, and with good reason. When I woke up that morning, I had barely gotten out of bed when he grabbed me without warning. Before I knew what was happening, I was on the floor, and he was on top of me with his hands around my throat. He was restraining me with his knees on my upper legs and pelvis. I desperately tried to get his hands off my neck, quickly beginning to feel pressure in my head. I distinctly remember the look on his face. It was terrifying because he appeared to be gleeful. His eyes were shining as if he was having the most thrilling time of his life, then darkness. She goes on to say, I don't know how long I was out the first time. As soon as I regained consciousness, he started strangling me again. I tried to fight the overwhelming panic. I didn't want to go down without a fight, but I was restrained and felt weaker than I'd ever been. 
I remember thinking about my boys. It's amazing how many thoughts go through your head when you're about to die. I was so fucking mad. Mad at the monster whose hands were choking the life out of me. Mad at myself for not getting out before he could do what he was doing. Mad at God for letting it happen. Just fucking mad. And then darkness again. Obviously, I survived. The second time I regained consciousness, he was smiling at me. He acted like the entire incident didn't happen, telling me that I had a nightmare. That wasn't the first time he had chucked me, but it was the first time I passed out. It also wasn't the first time he had tried to kill me, nor was it the last. By the end of November of last year, I was able to escape. My oldest son had moved out the year before, so my youngest son and I went into hiding for our own protection. To your answer, the question? Absolutely yes. According to Fox 8 News, one day after the Teton County coroner revealed that Gabby Petito died by strangulation, a former prosecutor is offering insight on what the scene revealed. According to KSL-TV, video from their helicopter showed remains above the ground but covered. The photographer said hiking shoes were found on the ground next to the body. KSL is not releasing video, but showed it to former Salt Lake County Prosecutor Kurt Morgan. One of the things I've been seeing in this story is a history of these individuals getting into fights and she attacked him, said Morgan. I don't see that here. All I see is one individual who suffered the damage and no evidence of injury created by her. He said he didn't notice any obvious signs of struggle and believes the suspect moved quickly. This was quick. This was not sitting here for five or six hours trying to figure out how to conceal the crime, he said. With the FBI indicting Brian Laundrie for using Gabby Petito's credit cards without her given consent, making it very fraudulent. It kind of narrows down the timeline between August 27th and August 30th that Gabby would have been strangled, right? So the last time Gabby was seen was August 27th at the Mary Piglets in Jackson Hole. It makes perfect sense why Brian, when picked up by the hitchhikers, in both cases, was very concerned about Jackson Hole because according to that situation and the witness, the eyewitnesses, the couple that were sitting next to Gabby and Brian in that restaurant on the 27th, it was quite a scene. According to Fox News, eyewitnesses have claimed that Gabby and Brian were seen arguing at Mary Piglet's in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Photographer Nina Angelo and her boyfriend Matthew England were in town for a wedding and visited the restaurant on August 27th for lunch between 1 and 2 p.m. Nina told the news outlet, quote, I have chills right now. It's crazy because it wasn't just like we passed them on the street. It was a full-blown incident. The eyewitness claimed that she and her boyfriend saw Brian allegedly arguing with the restaurant staff over their bill. Nina described Brian's body language as, quote, aggressive and said he had stormed out and came back to the restaurant four times while Gabby was seen apologizing to the staff. According to Crime Traveler, researching crime and the criminal mind, American psychoanalysis Heinz Cohut coined the term narcissistic rage, describing the risk of violent rage from narcissistic personalities if they are challenged or perceive rejection. Narcissists, by their very nature, don't take responsibility for their actions or events around them. They do not admit that they have faults or could be at fault because they genuinely don't believe they are. They would not call themselves a narcissist and they certainly wouldn't believe that they had a personality disorder. They believe they are special and powerful and they show the level of control and dominance such beliefs can achieve. In the case of Brian Blackwell, who was one such individual whose behavior and actions defied the belief of many, Brian was 18 years old and appeared to be the nice boy next door, but his this teenager had all nine traits possible. He was volatile, unpredictable, and very dangerous. 
In July 2004, Brian Blackwell killed his parents in Liverpool and then went on holiday with his girlfriend and his parents' credit cards. Upon return to England, he maintained the story that his parents were away until a horrified neighbor discovered the truth weeks after the crime. Brian denied any knowledge of the murders and was adamant police were wrong that he was involved. The mounting evidence against him told police otherwise and he was charged with double murder. After being psychologically tested, he was diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder, showing all nine traits on the skill. Brian had created false self with reality intertwined with fantasy. I find it very interesting that Brian ended up with Gabby Petito's credit cards after her death. It's almost as if he was challenged by her apologizing for his display, his public display at the Mary Piglets. And it may have caused this narcissist to feel so rejected that he was seeking revenge. Did Brian actually wait until Gabby was asleep? Is that why we see no struggle? Because he pinned her like this other author that talks about the narcissistic attack when she woke. Most therapists that talk about a narcissist will tell you they have one thing in common. They believe if you're not for them, you're against them. And that day at the Mary Piglets, I don't think Brian believed Gabby was for him, as she obviously apologized for his behavior. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with a true diagnostic narcissist that meets all nine traits, this narcissistic rage can get very quiet. And the first thing that happens is a silent treatment. Is it possible he was so angry that he waited for her to go to sleep just to seek his revenge? If Gabby had been sleeping, could that explain the hiking boots not on her feet? I'm not saying they're hers. I'm saying if they are hers, was she sleeping when he did this? In this moment, I ask you to take a hard look at this beautiful girl. Look at her throat, her neck. Do you see the marks under her jawline, across the back of her neck? Does it look like finger marks to you? Because I believe Brian had done this many times before to Gabby. Two 911 calls were placed from Brian Laundrie's parents' home before Gabby Petito was reported missing. Is it possible that Brian turned on his parents? Is that why his mother is wearing a compression cuff on her arm? Is Brian a serial killer in the making? Because once he has strangled in a narcissistic rage, he may continue to do so again living in a fantasy world from his books, his drawings, his grandioso appearance to the world. If someone is abusing you, you might feel scared, hurt, sad, confused, angry, embarrassed, or hopeless. Many people have feelings like these when they are being abused or after leaving an abusive relationship Help is available. Talk with someone you trust or call your local domestic sexual abuse hotline and talk with someone without having to give your name or location. Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE or 1-800-799-7233. Make Gabby Petito's story inspire you if you need help to seek the help that you need today. God bless you.